V Show with Captain Clay Shannon. Hey, what's going on, Gary? What's up, brother? Clay, Tell- what's going on, man? Yeah, just here um, um, being offended by uh, Gary <laughs> calling me Captain Clay. You know, I'll tell you a story what? about that someday in high school. I was a Captain Clay at one point. <laughs> Uh, What's new, Gary? Gary, just just uh, speaking out of uh, out of a pure heart, I guess. Pure heart. Absolutely. Oscar, what uh, uh, what uh, what's your what's your job in the wine world, and what's your question? Uh, my job in the wine world. So I used to be a psalm in a tiny little town in California called uh, Yonville, <laughs> and uh, not so tiny. N- what's that? Not so tiny in its respect in the wine world. Where did you? Uh, where were you psalming? Yeah. Uh, I was a, I was a psalm at the French Laundry. <laughs> I love Oscar's humility. Keep going. Is that a drive-in? Um, yeah. And so, um, yeah. And so now I'm I'm actually I, I swapped out of the psalm world, and now I'm actually down in, in uh, Miami, opening up uh, Chef Keller's new restaurant. That's amazing. So brother. we're actually in pre. Great. Yes. I'm excited. Uh, we're in pre-opening about, stages right you, now. Are you gonna Are you gonna pop up ever to the one that he's doing in Hudson Yards, which is right by VaynerMedia's headquarters? Do you know yeah, about? we're actually yeah we're actually designing that right now. So we're all of that's in pre-opening stages and designing. So it's kind of fun talking back and forth with uh, Thomas. Funny enough, I just did a walkthrough with him this morning with the uh, with the property here in Miami. I love it, brother. Great. What's your question? So, um, you know, so uh, again, so I was in the Psalm Psalm world, and I'm. You know, what's funny is that I I was a Psalm, but I hated Psalms. If if that because makes any sense. Because because ninety four percent of them are straight dick faces. Exactly, they're all dick holes, and so which is which is why I, I sort of opted out of that for my career. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I guess I guess you know, and I'm trying to teach people and about just drinking good wine and or just wine in general. And it doesn't have to be good as long as it's good for you. That's great. But I guess uh, you know, Dude, what you, would you brother, guys listen, say? Listen, in every industry. There's people that amass education and then try to use that education against other people because of the insecurities of their lives. Right, right, and then, you know, it's and I think it's one of those things where you know Assam could come up to a table and you know interrupt, you know interrupt. Sorry, pardon my pardon my interruption, but I'm going to interrupt your your expertise with my confidence. That sort of thing. Um, I, I think that's that's sort of the philosophy. I wouldn't once. No, you, you read a couple you, pages on wine, and you just become an asshole. Dude, um, this is a huge thesis of mine. You just literally delivered the line that I used for years when I was telling my story, which is the second, you know, I'd literally be in business talks, and I would say, how many of you have a friend or relative that's into wine? Most of them would raise their hand. And I was trying to explain why I started Wine Library TV, and I would say, well, then you know what I know, which is the second anybody gets any level of knowledge about wine, they become a straight asshole, right? And so I couldn't agree with you more. And by the right, way, exactly. the amount and then of, if you were to amount, visit, go ahead, go ahead. And right, and if you go to Sonoma and visit these these guys who are making the delicious wine, they they're the most humblest people on this planet. They're so nice. They open up their doors to you and they're not snobs and they're making the wine. Go ahead, Clay. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Just it's simple. It's it's food in other parts of the world. Wine is food, and, and let's just, uh, it's, it's great fun and good camaraderie. Uh, it doesn't have to be so sophisticated. But I will say this Some for, does. for Oscar, for Clay, for myself, for Trouty, because he's a wine snob. Um, it, you know, I also think that we get confused <laughs> at times. I, I, you know, 99% Sorry. of people don't give a fuck. You know, Oscar, like, and to your point, keep it simple, right. good news. 99% yeah. don't. Right, keep yeah. it simple and just drink what you like and that's it. And you Oscar, know when you go in a restaurant, just don't don't be, you know, don't get too nervous about the wine list. Just pick something that you like. Yeah. Oscar, I've seen the biggest CEOs in the world running $800 billion companies when the wine list comes, pass it away like it's got like... like weak in the knees, it's, totally. It's weak unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Wait, you know what drives me crazy? And, and I mean, I can probably afford any... Nice ball of wine. Expensive. Well, of course, I, I mean, you're I, spending forty thousand dollars for a pair of boots. You can do it. Yeah, well, buy I don't wine. think it's not forty, but, but <laughs> I can buy any ball of wine. They're close, close to it, right? So big deal. But you know what? It's it, when people look and cherish, and oh my God, oh geez, oh oh, uh, I'm already into my second glass. I just want to have fun. <laughs> You know, I mean, this is supposed to be fun and, and, and food and healthy and, and not, it's like, what the? 
I'm just not that. We're not that kind of company. That's for sure. No, you're not. And honestly, that's why you're sitting here in Oscar. I had the same reaction, brother. Like, I mean, the the pushback. Watching the narrative of Wine Library TV from 2006 to 2011 was super interesting for me because people, I mean, Psalms, a lot, and, and, and distributors, and like everybody, people were mad at me for making it fun and accessible. And I would sit there and say, idiots. I mean, John Trauman sitting here right now got into wine because of Wine Library TV. He was into it a little bit because his dad had a restaurant, but like, like it made it, like he found a voice that made it interesting. I, we were creating more interest in wine. All these sommeliers are doing is making it more inclusive and like it's the same old, I mean, oh God, honestly, you're, you're rehashing feelings, Oscar, right now that like it's super sad that people claim to care about something when what they're doing is taking the beauty of it and making it selfish and trying to put themselves on a fucking pedestal. Can I dumb it right. down? And knowing that, you know, great, um, you know, you can just, you know, you'll have a psalm come by and he'll be so pretentious about the wine being, and he knows nothing about the story behind it. He knows nothing about hanging out with the family or and knowing the way, how humble the, way, the family Oscar, was that Oscar, made it. Oscar, sometimes she or he does. What they don't know is I never, in my life, I've never had a Psalm ask me questions about how my day was or what I'm even doing there because I can tell you right now, I choose wine for my moments in time much more about the situation at hand and the mindset than the food that I'm eating. Every day of right, the week. Right, because I would always, sorry. Go, no, no, go ahead, brother. I'm no, because I, was, I would always approach the guest and say, what do you like? I'm not gonna go ahead and start recommending things just because there's a comma in the price. You know, it's funny, you just made me think of this incredible story. You remember Burns, you know Burns Steakhouse down in Tampa? Yeah, in Tampa. Le- legendary place, really not pretentious. And I thought it was so fun. I, as a matter of fact, it's so cool. It's more like Clay, like awesome. Like really chill, this crazy list. And the sommelier came up to me and goes, and to his credit, he said, what do you like? And I was just in a joyous mood and I thought it was that kind of place. And so I said, Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. <laughs> and, and they the, brought it out. No, 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 he shit on me and then I fucking destroyed him because, <laughs> I, for, because I forgot more about wine than he knew. But I... It was interesting, <laughs> to your point. That's a good story. <laughs> it's, it was really funny. Like, but anyway, real quick, we hit on something I've never said in my life, and I, I actually want to clip it and make a piece of content around it. I think wine should be chosen based on mood and atmosphere and the context of what's happening. If you have a Kentucky Derby party this weekend and you have a bunch of buddies over and you're betting, like that's a great time for bubbles or something simple or an over-the-top unbalanced, like like the, all my Psalm friends want to shit on Australian Shiraz because it's over extracted and, and it's makeup wine and it's full of shit. And guess what? At some level, if you want to be a scientist, they're not wrong. My thing is, if I'm hanging out with my buddies and I'm watching, you know, WrestleMania, I want to have a Cabernet that was fucking aged in bourbon bo- barrels because they're gonna be like, whoa, I like this because I don't usually like wine, but what the fuck is this? This is like some bourbon shit. I'm like, yeah, bro, it is. Like, like to me, it's the context of the mood that you're in way more than like the perfect acidity match of this Gruner is gonna crush it with the Kumamoto oysters. I'm like, awesome, nerd, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, who's gonna Keep drink Harlan while too. watching the Jets game? That's exactly right. And some jet games I need to drink vodka and some jet games I need to have some champagne and that's just the way it's gonna be. <laughs> it, it's, it's a simple product. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's fermented uh, grape juice is what it is. It's grown in different climates all over the world, uh, different soils, that's what makes it different, different yields, different trellises. And it, uh, to me, it's just simple fun. Let's have some fun. That's what everybody needs Don't to do. Don't complicate it, yeah. Let's, yeah. Um, Oscar, listen to me, listen to me good. With this energy and your pedigree, and it's funny, one of my favorite psalms of all time is a guy by the name of Andre Mack. Do you know Andre? Totally, hell yeah. Opening, opening a psalm at Per Se, absolutely. That's right, and you know, part of Keller's world, I'm starting to like Keller, even though I don't know him super well, based on the people that he keeps around him. And I always gravitated towards Andre because we would, we would talk about wine the way we talk about hip hop or like fun, he was just a good dude and he was fucking the opening totally. sommelier at Per Se, it was fancy as shit and he rolls out and he's just a normal guy. And, and, and I, you know, 
Laura Maniac, you know, who, you know, like th- these people that I thought just did a cr- buzz, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like they're out there. I said 94% for a reason. There's 6% that are the gold standard that are doing positivity. Please do me a favor, Oscar. Start tweeting and Instagramming about wine like a normal person. You could do a lot of good for the game. And I think having someone with your pedigree and, and your energy is important for the wine world. And if you do that, that would mean a lot. And I'll try to retweet it at times. Like do that. Do, put out content. That's how you change the game. Yeah, cool. I mean, that's how that's how I think I'm doing it on Instagram right now. Good. I just take a picture of a cork and, Good. you know, just write a Tell little story. story about it. I love it, brother. Thanks for calling. Thanks, guys. Clay, we're going to wrap up the show. There's going to be two things we're going to do. One, you're about to ask the question of the day. So this is your opportunity to get an answer to maybe, uh, you know, consumer insight or curiosity. or So you, I'll give you a second to think about this because I don't assume you watch my show and you probably didn't know this was coming. But I'm going to make a, I'm going to throw a right hook, not for me. <laughs> If I have ever, and this comes directly, sorry dad, this comes out of my dad's pocket, but this is how I feel right now. If I've ever brought you value in any shape or form, in any shape or form, it would mean the world to me if you bought some wine from Shannon Ridge, if you went to shannonridge.com right now and bought some wine to support this dude for one very basic reason. The wine world is a world that I love in the same way that I've fallen in love with the advertising world. I. I think a lot of people in the advertising world don't realize how much I love it because I push against the status quo and they think I'm out for me, I'm a charlatan, I'm a disruptor, I'm doing it for shtick. I'm doing it because (laughs) 98% of the behavior in the advertising world for the biggest brands in the world is wrong and it's in the self-interest of the agencies. I love the wine world but you know, 98% of the behavior of the conglomerates, the distributors and the retail stores are in it for their profit and things of that nature. Clay's an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur but he's a good dude and And when we support great ladies, great guys doing the right thing for our world, um, it matters. And so even though I throw right hooks for my wine club and wine library and the secret wine project that's coming, um, it would mean a lot to me if you supported Clay in some, one bottle, one case. Um, Look, personally I tasted quite a bit of them. They're terrible wines. But he, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They're they're remarkable. I I wouldn't expect anything (laughs) different. they're, They're really well, well made and and I think value driven wines for the price that he charges. So, ShannonRidge.com, you know, you guys have watched 288 of this and a thousand other videos. I don't throw right hooks often for myself. I never fucking throw right hooks for other people, fuck that. That will give you the indication of what I think this dude is up to. And more importantly, you know, buying a bottle from him represents not just him, he'll get the selfish, lucky, nice ROI from it, but there's a group of 20, 40, 50 people that I admire in this game and I'd like to see some of them win and so I have a funny feeling when you taste the bourbon-based red, the Sauvignon Blanc, I thought the rosé was uh, really interesting that I tasted. I like to get a better price for Wine Library on it. We'll talk about that tonight. Uh, But uh, in general, I think you're a good dude and I'm glad you're on the show. Thank you. Oh Thank my God, you. I almost did it again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, question of the day. Yeah, he bathed me with wine a few minutes question ago. Question of the day. Question of the day, uh, not a question, just... Uh, no, no, no. If you're, if you're looking for a great... Are no, you looking for a great, not... sustainably farmed uh, company to... Wor- what are you doing here? You're throwing a right hook in your question? I was going to say something about how sustainably farmed we are and simple and good wine. Sounded selfish. Especially after I just had a fucking right, commercial for you. All right, why don't you ask a question? No, no, you ask a general, here, here's what I would do. If I were you, do you think sparkling wine can work in California? Um, what, what's the last bottle of wine that really changed your perception of a varietal? Um, do you think I'd look good in red hair? Like, I don't know, something that is a fucking infomercial, dick. <laughs> I can't even respond right now. <laughs> yes, you I'm can. Gonna, first off, question can of you day. put it on hold? I'm going to grab you and strangle you. <laughs> yes, you can do that Secondly. after. We, we'll put it in the vlog. Um, I just, uh, what, I don't honestly, know what no, no, to I, ask. Let, let, I know you do, let me help you, because I love you. Okay. What is intriguing to you right now Thank about you. the consumer? Like, what, what are you seeing out there? Like, I, I do think you can get there, like whether it's boxed wine, screw top. Uh, look, rosés didn't fucking exist in our country five to seven years ago. Like, is there? Uh, what I packaging would, are you looking for? What kind of price points? What flavors? What profiles? Uh, what color? Is it rosé? Is it white? Is it red? What are you folks looking for? And um, and we'll make it. We grow a, no, no, sl- a lot of fruit. We can do it. You want me to start again? Nope. I want to thank. You. Cut it. All right. Love you, brother. All right. Take care. You keep asking questions. Will keep answering them.